Peptic ulcer disease is a common condition affecting the digestive system that occurs due to the formation of ulcers in the stomach and the duodenum due to gastric acid secretion or pepsin. Gastric ulcers are commonly located on the lesser curvature between the antrum and fundus. Most duodenal ulcers are located in the first part of the duodenum. Peptic ulcers can be asymptomatic. It can also lead to a range of complications including bleeding, obstruction, perforation and even cancer. Today, we will discuss the clinical manifestations, complications, diagnosis and management of peptic ulcer disease. Peptic ulcers are commonly asymptomatic. However, symptomatic peptic ulcers usually present with epigastric pain, foot-provoked epigastric discomfort and fullness, early satiety and nausea. Very rarely, peptic ulcers can occur in a McHale's diverticulum. There are several complications of peptic ulcer disease. One is bleeding. Due to chronic upper GI bleeding, these patients may develop microcytic or iron deficiency anemia. And also, peptic ulcers may erode into arteries, causing massive upper GI bleeding. Next, it can cause gastric outlet obstruction, penetration into a solid organ or fistulation into a hollow viscous and free perforation. Perforation complicate 2-10% to of patients with peptic ulcer disease. Ulcer perforation should be suspected in patients who suddenly develop severe diffuse abdominal pain, a classic triad of sudden onset abdominal pain, tachycardia and abdominal rigidity is the hallmark of peptic cause perforation. On examination, the liver dullness may be absent. The diagnosis of peptic ulcer disease is suspected in patients with dyspepsia, especially in the setting of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug use or a history of Helicobacter pylori infection. Helicobacter pylori is a bacterial species that can infect the stomach lining and cause chronic inflammation which can lead to various gastrointestinal diseases including gastritis, gastric carcinoma and gastric lymphoma. The diagnosis of peptic ulcer disease is definitively established by direct visualization of the ulcer on upper GI endoscopy. All ulcers with malignant features should be biopsied. Endoscopic features that suggest that an ulcer may be malignant include an ulcerated mass protruding into the lumen, holes surrounding the ulcer crater that are nodular, clubbed, fused or stopped short of the ulcer margin, an overhanging irregular or thickened ulcer margins, A routine biopsy of benign appearing duodenal ulcers is not recommended as they are unlikely to be malignant. In areas with high gastric cancer incidence, the gastric ulcer should be biopsied. The decision to biopsy benign appearing gastric ulcers in an area of low gastric cancer incidence is controversial. Although we biopsy benign appearing gastric ulcers at the index upper GI endoscopy as they may have the malignancy, 
Some experts do not biopsy gastric cultures if the patient's history and demographic features suggest a low risk of gastric cancer. Regarding the management of peptic culture disease, all patients diagnosed with peptic culture disease should undergo testing for H. pylori infection. If the patient is H. pylori positive, H. pylori eradication therapy should be done and the confirmatory testing should be done after 4 or more weeks. Also, the patient should be advised to avoid contributory factors such as NSAIDs and bad food habits. All patients should be started with antisecretory therapy with proton pump inhibitors such as omeprazole, pantoprazole, ismoprazole and etc. The duration of therapy depends on the etiology, ulcer location and the presence of ulcer complications. Considering the prognosis, approximately 60% of peptic cultures heal spontaneously but with the eradication of H. pylori infection, ulcer healing rates are more than 90%. Even if continued PPI use, approximately 5-30% to of peptic cultures recur within the first year. Approximately 5-10% to of ulcers are refractory to antisectory therapy with the PPI. In summary, this video discusses peptic ulcer disease which is a common condition that occurs due to the formation of ulcers in the stomach and the duodenum because of gastric acid secretion or pepsin. The ulcers are commonly asymptomatic but when symptoms occur they usually present as epigastric pain, food provoke epigastric discomfort fullness, early satiety, and nausea. Very rarely peptic ulcers can occur in a Michaels diverticulum. Complications of peptic ulcer disease including bleeding, gastric outlet obstruction, penetration into a solid organ or fistulation into a hollow viscous and free perforation. The diagnosis of peptic ulcer disease is suspected in patients with dyspepsia, particularly in the setting of NSA use or a history of H. pylori infection which can cause chronic inflammation and lead to various gastrointestinal diseases including gastritis, gastric carcinoma and gastric lymphoma. The diagnosis of peptic ulcer disease is definitively established by direct visualization of the ulcer on upper GI endoscopy and all ulcers with malignant features should be biopsied. All patients diagnosed with peptic ulcer disease should undergo testing for H. pylori infection and if positive H. pylori eradication therapy should be done. The patient should be advised to avoid contributory factors such as NSAIDs and poor dietary habits. Antisecretory therapy with proton pump inhibitors is recommended for all patients and the duration of therapy depends on the etiology, ulcer location and the presence of ulcer complications. 60% of patients with peptic ulcers heal spontaneously but with H. pylori eradication ulcer healing rates are more than 90%. Even with continued PPI use, approximately 5 to 30% of peptic ulcers recur within the first year. And approximately 5 to 10% of ulcers are refractory to antisecretory therapy with the PPI.